talk about your background because you're born bred, educated in Singapore. You come from a family of four. Yes. Your father was a real estate consultant. Your mother a housewife. Where did you get your entrepreneurial instinct from? <laughs> um, I think a little bit of I, I, primarily my parents, right? I think they were they were always pushing me to try new stuff, um, to do different things, and. Um, uh, you know, and to be afraid, to, and, and not to be afraid to fail. I think that's one of the things that they said, just go out and, and do what you're passionate about. Now, there are a couple of things they expected from us to say, we expect you to do well in school, not to get into too much trouble, you know, over and above. But other than that, you know, it's a free for all. What did they say when you told them you're going to give up your career as a lawyer to get into gaming? <laughs> what was their reaction? Do you remember? Uh, I don't really remember because... <laughs> or you choose not to remember. <laughs> well, I, 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 I think I kind of started on it first without telling them about it. And I think by the time, um, you know, it was really too far down the path, I kind of mentioned it in passing and... Uh, Just in passing? In passing. Yeah. And uh, I think they were, they were okay. I think from, from, from their perspective, it was all about supporting us and letting us do whatever we wanted to do. And um, they would... You know, they had they had a strong sense of responsibility to say, look, I'm going to get you to to, to university. You're going to get a, a good degree, and then you're on your own. You can do anything you want to do, but um, I've done my part, mm. so to speak. Well, over the years, you've had this list of angel investors who've become, in a way, mentors to you. What's mm. the most valuable piece of advice you've received about building a great business? <laughs> I, I think. I would say that, um, yeah, I've been very blessed to get some of the best, I think, angel investors uh, in the business, whether it's um, Mr. Ko Boon Hui, Mr. Lim Carling, and, and many of them constantly give, give lots of advice. I, I, I don't think there's a single bit of advice um, I can, that comes to mind, but there are many. For example, I remember being incredibly um, uh, stressed out about management of my time, for example, and, and they would weigh in and say, look, you know, these are things that you should you should be able to do, or you should do at this point of time. And then that advice, I think the important part about it evolved too. Mm -hmm. You know, as the company evolved, as a, as a company when we were a 20-man startup to today where we're close to 1,000, that advice still comes on and it's one thing that I always listen to. What's your leadership and management style like? What is Tan Ming Liang <laughs> like as the boss? I am pretty tough. I am pretty How tough. How tough? Um, I think when it comes to getting work done, you know, or, or getting the best work done, I think that's what I really demand. And it doesn't matter whether it's, um, you know, whether it's in engineering, logistics, or administration, I demand the best. Be phenomenal. I think that's, that's one of the things that... Um, you never take no for an answer? Um, I, I take no for an answer, but then I find a way to make it a yes. <laughs> <laughs> but being phenomenal, that's important. And, and I believe it's... It's in every single person to be able to push themselves, not just to, to what they believe to be the, their very best, but beyond that. Do you think your leadership style will change once you become a listed company? I think my management style will change in the sense that um, today we, we are spread out everywhere in the world. Um, I think uh, in terms of uh, making sure the right processes are put into place, corporate governance, so on and so forth, I think that's evolved you know, through the years. I mean, no longer can I yell at the person and say, get me the very best, you know, when all of us are in a single room. And today we are, we are nine offices worldwide in the US, Europe, and in Asia. Um, but I think some of the core fundamentals remain the same. One of our core values is playing hard, playing fair. It's about being incredibly passionate about competing, but making sure that everything that we do is always done with the right legal, moral, ethical standards. I think things like that don't change in a company. Mm. And that's something that we'll continue and to And finally, do. I know you're a very busy man, always traveling from the US to Asia. What does, what does Tan Ming Liang do outside of work? <laughs> I don't really do anything outside <laughs> of work. Um, and that's the challenge, right? I, I, I have absolutely no other passions besides gaming and, um, and uh, Razor, for that matter, and both of which are pretty much the same. Is it true you haven't taken a holiday since 2009? Uh, yeah. I, I have not. Uh, yeah, every, I mean, every day, this is my ultimate holiday. I'm having fun every single day. Mm. Don't get me wrong, some days are a little tougher. You know, some days are easier, but it's like playing a computer game. There's always that next challenge ahead of you. Mm. And you run toward that challenge. You don't, you don't walk toward the challenge. You run toward the challenge and after you're done with it, what's next? And that was Tan Min Liang, gamer, co-founder and CEO at Razer. Hope you've enjoyed the program. Do catch us online at managingasia.cnbc.com for more exclusive leadership insights. Until next time, I'm Christine Tan. Thanks for watching.
Hi, I'm Christine Tan and thanks for watching Managing Asia on CNBC Live. You can check out more of our great content by clicking on the videos on screen. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for the very best in feature programming. Thanks for watching.